Really love sports, everyone. Come on in, ladies. Come on in. I'm Mindy Davis. And you're locked in. We got a lot to talk about for this scope report. Right here, we love sports with sports and gaming is exquisite fusion. So get your comfort and settle in, babies. Welcome to the show. Feeling mighty fine. And I want to take this time to thank everyone for logging into the platforms for 1021 Magazine. Loading up the posts for me. We got a lot of behind the scenes that are happening. But I'm so glad that you all are here. This is another chat conversations. And I got some pecan pie this time around instead of the crab legs. But they are still on deck. I've just been having a lovely, lovely time just indulging and uh, watching things play out. That's right. One of the first things that's so important. And journalism. It's always going to be more to a story. Even if it's a little bit. Mm -hmm. But something very climatic and explosive. It's going to be more to the story. Absolutely. And like I said. Where there is a forest fire hey baby <laughs> a match has been lit I mean like lit and sometimes people love to do the narrative on things but 
we're seeing everything is not always what it seems to be. So we're going to start off this moment here again with Antonio Brown, AB, for this segment. And we have some new developments. Now, when everything happened with him leaving the field, tossing it all, chucking it all, there were so many people within the NFL and past athletes and all of that who just was ready to you know have their say on the initial set of events um, commentators who should have known even a little bit better but listen a lot of times when you let your emotions out that means that you humanly so have been sitting on your own POV of someone and we saw that with a lot of the sport broadcaster commentators on Antonio Brown on AB. I'm just sick of this guy. I'm just ready. You've been always sick of the guy, okay? You've been always sick of him. You've always had an angst. You always felt like he didn't deserve the chances that he did get. You always felt, even despite his physicality and breaking records and good at what he does, that he didn't deserve to be there because that was internal. And so, with the height of everything that happened, not knowing the facts, then you let your emotions play out. He didn't deserve to be there. Now, listen, I'm not making any excuses for the way that um, things are being handled with people. But if you live long enough and went so many trips around the sun with wisdom, with wisdom, then you would know when something is fed up or somebody has Sparked the joint, okay? Sparked it. Sparked it so much that you're just like, forget it. <laughs> and we could use another F-bomb if we wanted to. You know what I mean? Uh, but that was a moment of fed up. And like I said before on the first series here, some people can throw enormous shade or say something to tick you off without you seeing the full scope of their mouth. To, you know, do like reading of what they're saying. They can be so slick. They have clenched teeth and they can do it. <laughs> it's been done. Talking through their teeth. Not doing much for you to decipher what it is. But whatever sparked, we have some new revelations right here, right now. But again, what I do love about the not jumping to conclusions and to follow the story and know that in climatic moments it's probably always going to be more than not a story within a story within a story because you don't just climatic off like that without something to have sparked it off even if it wasn't in that moment but I do believe that it was in that moment it was very slick especially when you have wisdom See, you can be a journalist or you can be a media and you may not have the right tutelage um, for things to see how things play out. You know what I mean? That's a fair enough statement to say that. Uh, but when you stick with the smoking gun, because that was a forest fire, just like I said. So it's always something there. So we have some interesting um, deets here, okay? Obviously, A.B. stayed in New York. You know, he went to an uh, NBA game, met up with some celebrities, and, um, you know, he hung out. Meanwhile, you got all these people with their synopsis, which is fine, because guess what? His move made boring news and made a story, you know, for people to not have a slower news day other than talking about playoffs and, and anything like that, you know? But now what we're getting here and still there are some naysayers but then why would it not be that is what makes the world go around i think we can all agree on that but we now have new developments here with antonio brown and it says that we're finding pressure from the bucks organization not specifically naming but people have speculation Pressure to play, but he was injured. Now, you got a lot of people who say, gotta be fair and balanced, not always a bomb. 
because if you're so biased, you know, you can't really move forward. You can have some people say, well, if he's so injured, the way he just trotted, skipped, leaped, bounced, jumping jacks, all of that across the field to get out of the situation at hand and leave his teammates hanging. He just quit on their team. He looked pretty fine to me. Well, I am a living testament. <laughs> Anybody else, you can feel so bad. That if something sparks the God-given adrenaline comes in and you are out of that pain for a while. Okay? So, that doesn't hold water at all, ladies and gentlemen. That, that really doesn't. So, Antonio Brown says that he was pressured and he was injured and this is what we got. In a full statement. I'm going to have some of my iced coffee. First of all, i like to express my gratitude to the Bucks fans and my teammates. That's three people. Bucks fans and my teammates. The Bucks helped me return to productive football after I had difficulties that could have ended my career. We work together to resolve those difficulties and I will always appreciate that. Being part of a Super Bowl champion team and then a contender is a dream come true. I make mistakes. I'm working on myself and I have positive influences around me. But one thing I don't do is shy away from playing hard on the field. No one can accuse me of not giving it my all every play. Because of my commitment to the game, I relented to pressure directly from my coach to play injured. Now you can be petty teddy, petty pie, and say, what coach? Can we go out on a limb and say Coach Arians? He said coach. And let's remember that coach did say no communications of a sort for this pop-off for this goodbye giddy up and go okay so back to that uh because of my commitment to the game i'm gonna say that back over i re relented to pressure relented to pressure directly from my coach to play injured Despite the pain, I suited up. The staff injected me with what I now know was a powerful and sometimes dangerous painkiller that the NFLPA has warned against using, and I gave it my all for the team. Okay, smells like... I'll suit money. Don't need a natural dramas for that. I played until it was clear that I could not use my ankle to safely perform my playing responsibilities. On top of that, the pain was extreme. I took a seat on the sideline and my coach came up to me. Again, confrontational with the coach. We gotta look at the tapes. To the very sideline and my coach came up to me very upset and shouted. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I told him. The exchange. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Especially if you're going to come up trying to sun somebody in the way you talk to people. There's a certain decorum on how people need to talk to people. And let's not act like some coaches don't have a little bit more aggression than others. Our reputation that precedes them that a lot of people don't want to chit chat and talk about. Okay. Click. I told him. It's my ankle. But he knew that. He knew that. It was well documented and we had discussed it. He then ordered, ordered. Now listen. We know that A.B. probably didn't use these words, but look how everything was just setting up on blocks. Do y'all hear the words? 
for political science major law. Y'all hear these building blocks building up specific ideology words, people. <laughs> but he knew that. It was well documented and we had discussed it. Now you're setting up for you knew this, we discussed this, what you mean hollering at me on this field. And sticking me with something that's illegal. Oh, we got to find out what that is. He then ordered me to get on the field. I said, coach, I can't. I can't. He didn't call for medical attention. Oh, my God, people, there's a building blocks. There is a building block. Didn't call for attention. Now I'm hurt and I'm injured. I'm swelling. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then y'all shot me up with something illegal. Yeah. He didn't call for medical attention. It said he shot at me. You're done. While he ran his fingers across his throat. So what does... Let me try it. You're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. Just want to have a little dramatics here. Coach was telling me that if I didn't play hurt, that I was done with the Bucks. I didn't quit. I was cut. I didn't walk away from my brothers. I was thrown out. Being fired on the sideline for having a painful injury was bad enough. Then came their spin. Oh, wow. Now, this is a good rider right here. Whoever this is, mm -hmm. the wording, the verbiage. Whew. <sighs> Being fired on the sideline from having a painful injury was bad enough. Then came their spin, and then they got it in the little small quote, quote, spin. Coach denied on national television that he knew about my ankle. Well, he sure did. He didn't say it was an injury. That's 100% an accurate. Not only did he know I missed several games with the injury, he and I exchanged texts. Okay, you got to pull out the text. Uh, days before the game when he clearly acknowledged my injury. Oh, you got to pull them out, AB. You and your team, y'all going to have to pull those texts out. Mm -hmm. He obviously knew I was on the injury list. And the GM, okay, now you're bringing in the big suits, acknowledged after the game in text messages to my camp that I did tell Coach about my ankle pain on Sunday. Well, the only coach that was running his mouth for our post-conference was Arians. So I think it's safe to say that, that he's talking about him. Okay. Um... I know we were losing to the Jets. See, this is someone who's dissecting and dotting every I and crossing every T and going for every verbiage there as, darlings. I know we were losing to the Jets, and that was frustrating for all of us, but I could not make football plays on that ankle. Yes, I walked off the field, but there's a major difference between launching from the line and taking hits compared to jogging off the field with a rush of emotion. Going through your mind. Go, oh my God, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That is poetic. That's a writer. And there's nothing wrong with that because it is facts, but you're establishing the embellishment. And it looks pretty bad. Not on AB's part either. All of this looks really, really illegal. But then allegedly is where you have to put it until it goes before. Okay? Mm. That's very poetic there. <sighs> With a rush of emotions. Because you talking about, you're done. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how the throat thing did it. But we need to look back at those tapes and see if we saw some of that. Okay? Got to be careful. Everybody got to be careful what they're talking about. Because you can slow roll the tapes. You know? Uh... I am reflecting on my reaction, but there was a trigger 
The trigger was someone telling me that I am not allowed to feel pain. Okay, so now we got an unsympathetic, allegedly, coach that's already giving you menacing, threatening, that throat action. Ugh, my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. The trigger was someone telling me that I'm not allowed to feel pain. I acknowledge my past, but my past does not make me a second-class citizen. So now... You're given all these feelings, the rush of emotion. See how it just keeps flowing? The rider is staying right on point. They're not losing anything there. My past does not forfeit my right to be heard when I am in pain. First, they cut me. Now, they cage me. Instead of asking how I felt or getting to the bottom of it, the team texts my camp promoting a totally false narrative that I randomly acted out without any explanation. They even told us in writing, don't spin this any other way. I have stress. I have things I need to work on. But the worst part of this has been the Bucks' repeated effort to portray this as a random outburst. They are telling people that I first walked off, then I was cut. No, 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 no. I was cut first, and then I went home. They threw me out like an animal. And I refused to wear their brand on my body, so I took my jersey off. I'll read the next part. We're going to do a part two here. I think we need a breather. I told you all there's a forest fire. Matches were lit. Everyone is going to have their seat at the table to explain their things, bring forth stuff, but it is very telling how when Coach said, he's no longer a book. And then he had to kind of walk it back the next day because the suits were like, wait a minute, we got to go on damage control because uh, 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 hey baby, come on back baby, woo, that's my city, I'm a Tampa Floridian. And we're going to come on back with some more of this series, so keep it locked. I did reach out to AB, though, and I did put my at, and then my at, at, hey, baby, because his headline read on one of his posts, Davis Island, and hey, baby, I am a Tampa floor, really a baby, hey, baby. There's a lot of Davis Islands out there. I'm BB Davis, but I knew Davis Island is in Hey baby, Tampa, hey baby. How much I wanna bet he talking to the suits? Cause he in Tampa. Babies. We'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep.